Let us continue with our class here for the show. Today's class number 23. Okay, we start with uh, Sefer's Shmiras um, Halashon. <clears throat> and today's topic still in one's own time. At times people totally ignore the obligation to study Torah and yet becomes very successful in business. However, if one will carefully follow the fortunes of such individual, they will discover that many instances, circumstances beyond their control, cause them to lose significant amounts of hard earned money. So, it's very interesting. One second. Okay, so they, they make money, they look successful, but guess what? If you follow them, you'll see that uh, they lose a lot, right? This, um, this may be heaven way of taking away that which right, rightfully belongs to someone else, as it is written, one who accumulates wealth, but not with justice, in half his days will uh, forsake him. Yermiyahu 17.11. So basically, uh, <clears throat> when Hashem gives uh, parnasa, so and we, and say, uh, person, I don't want to say we, when, uh, when somebody tried to steal from somebody, cheat somebody else, right? So he's, uh, he's going to lose it. For sure. For, um, for it may be <clears throat> that the person accumulates uh, some of his wealth during time he was, uh, that was not his own. Many times it, he should have been dedicated to the study of the Torah, other mitzvahs. Whoa. So it's very interesting. Not, not like he's uh, like a thief and that's it, right? <clears throat> he was making money in, uh, in the forbidden time. Meaning, for, what is forbidden time? As we learned uh, some time ago, uh, two, two, two classes ago, that uh, every person we said must uh, learn time, uh, must learn Torah. So if he, person say, no, you don't let me work overtime <clears throat> and, uh, and cancel his Torah class, right? So it, it's like he's, he's working in a stolen time. Very interesting. <clears throat> so he's going to lose his mind. I was the Rabbi Nasson, 29.2, states whoever disputes, uh, um, disrupts himself from study of the words of Torah will have disruption, disruption, cast his way, which will interfere with his daily affairs. For example, a lion or a leopard or armed bandits may come, uh, surround his property and exact retribution from him. As it is written, there is indeed God who judges the land. It says in Tehillim 58.12. Right, so one second. So basically what uh, Avaz the Rabbi Nassim said, whoever dis um, disrupts himself from studying the Torah. So a person said, no, I'm going to go to a birthday party, this party, that party, or whatever person has plans. Right, so these plans are not for free. If, uh, if he cancels the Torah class, guess what? That's what's going to happen. <clears throat> the above punishment is a measure for measure. Of course, there is sometimes, uh, um, sometimes uh, there is a, what is it? Uh, you, you must postpone class or, or reschedule. So today uh, we, we had to reschedule one class because, uh, because of uh, some circumstances. Some, some people have some circumstances, so, but we reschedule it, now we cancel it. We did it uh, one hour later, and that's it. <clears throat> Because, um, because the, the person neglected his uh, obligation to study Torah and insisted uh, and instead uh, uh, strained to amass material wealth, uh, therefore circumstances will force him to turn his uh, attention away from, uh, from the endeavors in which he was um, uh, wrongfully chosen to toil, right? So he decided to do the business, to work, over time to, to be, he or she was trying, like uh, afraid to, to lose their job and stuff like that. I, I work in a company like every year, like twice a year, twice a year they, they would do the um, layoffs and everybody would uh, tremble, uh, I don't know, a week before, two weeks before. And then uh, the best way, uh, the, the best time was uh, like, like after layoffs, like a few weeks after layoffs, so we know that it's over and you can uh, breathe, uh, for another few months, yes. It was a terrible uh, thing, right? So, so that, that's what people do, <clears throat> right? So Hashem said, uh, therefore circumstances will force him 
to turn his attention away from endeavors in which uh, he was uh, wrongfully cho chosen to toil. Right? You, you wanted to uh, work overtime because you, you're afraid they're going to lay you off. Guess what? And uh, cast, uh, and um, cancel the Torah study. <coughs> Sorry. The sages state, if person sees affliction come upon him, he should examine his ways. <coughs> if he ex examines them and they are not lacking, he should attribute uh, his suffering to disruption of the Torah study. Rahul's five So the sage is very clear. I mean, uh, maybe in our generation it's, it's hard. I mean, um, we're not talking big Tzadikim, but for simple people, it's very simple to find a deficiency with us. And of course, a person has to have a, a mentor, a rabbi to consult. And if he or she does not know what, what is the problem, I'm getting this problem, just ask. Many times uh, this mentor would be able to help you. Of course, I mean that there's no prophecy, but um, logically we, we can derive. But if, for example, did not find anything, the person is tzaddik, she is tzaddika, there is uh, nothing wrong. So guess what? It's because of the Torah study. Right? And it's for men and then for women, because women, uh, even though they're not obligated to, to study Torah, um, but they, they must know Torah. So how can you know without, without studying? I don't know, it's a good question. So meaning they also obligated to study. In conclusion, uh, in conclusion, the world and its uh, fullness belongs to the Holy One. Blessed is He. He fashioned all of the creations uh, for His honor. As it is written, all uh, that um, all that I call by my name and for my honor, I have created. Ishayahu 43.7. Therefore, one who seeks a life of fulfillment and tranquility should uh, heed to David's call. Trust in Hashem and do good. Okay. Okay, so David said we follow the lead. Okay. No problem. So we continue today with Hill Pastishua. Uh, we are in chapter six and uh, halacha number three. So and last time it's uh, uh, we, we we covered uh, halacha one and two. And halacha one number one was a uh, little shocking or very much shocking, I would say. When the Rambam was telling us how small children uh, would die because of the parents, sinful parents, right? right. So basically, uh, this chapter is about uh, retribution, right? that Hashem is, uh, is not kidding, right? And, and last, to show, we say how, uh, how to, to be shielded uh, from, from this retribution, to show so if a person repents, that's it. So this the show is going to shield him from our uh, from um, from all of these retributions, which is good. <clears throat> okay, so halacha number three. It's very I just checked, it's very long halacha, but try to finish it today. So it says, okay, without commentary. Uh, a person may commit a great sin or many sins, causing the judgment re uh, rendered before the true judge to be uh, the retribution administered to this transgressor for these sins, which uh, he willfully and consciously committed. Um, no, no, sorry, for these sins he willfully and consciously committed, is that his teshuva will be, will be held back. Okay, so it's not canceled, but held back, okay? He will not be allowed uh, the, um, the chance to repent from our weaknesses so that he will die and be wiped out because of his sins uh, he committed. So meaning uh, some people are so, so sinful. So Rambam is saying, uh, yeah, Hashem lo loves everybody. So that's uh, what everybody say. Yes, he, he does. But some people, he does not like. Why? He just say, I, I, don't, I don't want you to show. Just uh, keep it. This is implied by the Holy One, blessed be He. In statements rendered by Ishayahu 610, make the heart of the people fat and make their eyes heavy. Meaning, uh, make their the, the, uh, uh, hearts fat, meaning so they should not do the show, like insensitive. Right? Smear their eyes 
smear over their eyes, lest uh, they see uh, with their eyes, understand with their hearts, repent, and be healed. So out of the people, right, Yishayahu, loved Jewish nation so much, he said, but these people, specific people, don't allow them to do the show, don't allow them to be inspired. Similarly, in the Re'am, in 36, 16, states, they mark the messengers of God, scorn his words, scoffed uh, at his prophets, until the anger of God mounted uh, uh, up against his people, until there was no remedy. That is scary. Uh, implied by these verses is that they were willingly sinned, multiply, multiplying their iniquity until it was necessary to hold back their Teshua, which is referred to as a remedy. So they sinned so much, so Hashem said, that's it, no more, no, no to shoot for you. Of course, as we said many times, uh, and I want to remind again, I'm sure that Rambam is going to say later on, but, uh, uh, but just so to remind us, a person can always do Teshuvah, but in this situation, Hashem is not going to help. So he said, uh, you on your own. As, and as Rabbi Ruben Shlita uh, recently say, in this, uh, in this specific uh, situation, you're obligated to be Apikoros. So what is it, Apikoros? You go against Hashem's will. He said, I don't want you, I don't want you to show up, and you be Apikoros, you don't listen to Hashem, and you still try to do Teshuvah. Sure. So that's the only exception when you are allowed to be Apikoros. For this reason, it is written in the Torah, in, uh, in Shmos, <clears throat> 14, uh, 14, 4. I will harden uh, Pharaoh's heart since he began to sin on his own initiative and cause hardship to the, to the Israelites um, who dwell in the land. As in uh, Shmos 1.10 states, come, let us deal wisely with them. A judgment, <clears throat> um, judgment obligated that he be uh, prevented from repenting so that he would suffer retribution. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be he, hardened his heart. So we, of course, we're going to go in details with uh, the, 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 a lot of commentaries, but it's um, very fundamental things that we learn here. So sometimes Hashem would harden the heart of the person and he would never go into the to show. So some people ask me, they say, Rabbi, tell me, they would describe some situation, some person and say, Rabbi, please tell me what to tell this person. Right, like, I don't know, some people are a little naive. They think that, uh, you know, some uh, magic words and uh, we say abracadabra and uh, whatever, and uh, the, 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 this, this person is going to do the show. It does not work that way. You understand? Some people have so, so uh, hard, uh, as you say, smeared with, uh, with fat, right? Whatever you tell them, they're not going to listen. They're not ready to listen. Maybe they never going to be ready to listen. Okay, that, that's a different story. Why did God send Moshe to Pharaoh, telling him, "Send forth people, repent"? Right. The Holy One, blessed be He, had already told him that He would not release the people, as the Shmos ninth uh, ninth story states. Uh, I am. Um, I release. I am sorry. I realize that you and your subject still uh, do not fear God, right? So, and I know you, right? You and your subject do not fear God. Uh, the, reason, um, the reason is stated in, um, in Shmos 9.16, for this alone I have pre uh, pre preserved you, so that my name will be spoken about throughout the earth. There is uh, to make known to all the inhabitants of the world that the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be He, uh, withholds repentance from a sinner. He cannot repent, but He uh, will die in the wickedness, and, uh, um, and He initially committed, that, that He initially committed will, willfully. So He starts with uh, um, willful uh, sins, and uh, at the end, Hashem is not, is not going to grant him repentance. Okay. So, and 
I hope we have enough time to discuss this uh, halacha. I, I, hopefully, we're going to finish, right? With a, it's a very interesting story about Pharaoh, right? It's a simple, logical question. Hashem said, go to Pharaoh, but he's not going to listen to him. But, but you talk to him respectfully, explain who is Hashem, where we're going out for three days, this and that. But guess what? You don't want Moshe, what? He's not going to listen. But I'm Hashem. Very interesting. So we're going to explain this concept today. That's what Hashem. Similarly, uh, Sihon uh, was held liable for uh, held liable for repentance uh, to be with, with help from him because of the sins he committed. Sihon, right? Uh, as Dvarim 230 states, God, um, your Lord, hardened his spirit and strengthened his heart. Also, the Canaanites were held back from repenting because of their abominable acts. Okay. Uh, so that they would uh, wage a war against Israel. Yehoshua 11.20 states, this was inspired by God to harden their hearts. I mean, uh, harden their hearts because if you see that uh, this uh, nation of Israel went out of uh, Egypt and, and uh, God uh, of Israel makes so many, so many miracles for them. Like, why would he go to, to war against them, right? But Hashem hardened their heart so that they should uh, come against Israel in a battle in order to utterly destroy them. Why? Right? Because, as we said, they're sinners. Similarly, the Israelites, uh, during the era of Eliyahu, committed many iniquities. Um, repentance was held back from those who committed this many sins. As uh, Kings Aleph 1837 um, states, uh, you have turned their hearts backwards. There is held repentance back from them. <clears throat> In conclusion, the Almighty did not decree that Pharaoh should harm the Israelites and Sihon should sin in the land and that Canaanites should perform abominable acts or that Israelites should worship idols. They all sinned on their own initiative and they were obligated, uh, obligated to have Teshua held back from them. Okay. So basically, when it says uh, last sentence, they were obligated to have Teshua to, ha to be held back from them. Meaning, that's uh, that part of the nature. <coughs> for like, uh, for, um, <coughs> for their sins, whatever they did. Okay, so let's do from the beginning. And we're going to comment uh, with uh, we're going to with all of the commentaries, and all of the additional explanations. Okay, <clears throat> so it says a person may commit a great deal of many sins, causing the judgment rendered before the true judge. True judge is Hashem. To be that uh, the retribution administered to this transgressor for these sins, uh, which he uh, willfully and consciously committed is that Teshua will be held back. So that's the punishment that Teshua is held back. Okay, so from the beginning. A person, comment there, 18. In this halacha, <clears throat> Rambam gives um, one explanation. Uh, a second explanation is offered in halacha 5. To resolve the difficulty present, uh, presented by biblical uh, verses that imply that um, God decrees that men, men will sing. Right, so it looks like right. So it said, and in Torah it says, uh, well, and when you're going to sin, uh, you're going to get punished and this and that. Right, so it looks like Hashem decreed that they're going to sin. In um, in a previous halachas, the Rambam held um, had described various levels of retribution. Okay, I mean, in, in, in for, uh, that's what we covered last time. Uh, this halacha deals with uh, one of the most severe level of the retribution, one in which man is uh, prevented from repenting. So preventing uh, from uh, from re repentance, it's not it is it is a retribution for a sin. Right. So meaning that um, in previous one when when a person in previous halacha well, you know, maybe he's going to lose money, many sickness, this and that. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty minor, right? It is retribution, it's very painful, but it is pretty minor 
compared to, to what we said here, that Hashem is going to withdraw his, uh, his ability to repent. In such an instance, but so it is a, a punishment. In such an instance, God removes man's uh, potential for free choice. A further explanation of this concept mentioned in this halacha uh, and found in Shmon Eprakim, chapter 8. Okay. So, so it was first commentary. So one more time, the whole sentence. No, not the whole, but uh, we're going to read an, until next note. A person may commit a great deal, a, a great sin. 19. In this instance, Rambam does not define what considers a great sin in double quotes, right? In a contrast to, um, to the, um, in, in a contrast to the sin mentioned in chapter three, that hold back the Shua, no um, arbitrary criteria are mentioned. Okay, so he, he does not dis, uh, discuss what does it mean uh, great sin. Okay, so one more time the whole sentence. Uh, a person may commit uh, a great sin or many sins, causing the judgment uh, to be um, judgment rendered before the true judge to be a retribution administered to, to this transgression for these sins, right? Okay, so come to it. At times, the <clears throat> cumulative effect of many lesser sins can have the same effect as a more severe sin. So that's, uh, that's the danger. And the um, <clears throat> person who, who is uh, habitually do one sin, even small one, but constantly, it is uh, most likely that he he lost this um, uh, this right to do the shua. So, for example, for example, uh, uh, we say that somebody does constantly. For example, somebody is uh, um, uh, shaving with a razor, right? A man shaving with a razor, which is forbidden, right? So he shaving with a razor, meaning on everyday basis. So meaning that he disregarded that sin completely. You understand? So in the collects, 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 and cumulative effect. So uh, I don't know, he, he shaved for uh, a year, two years, I don't know how many years, and it could be to the greatest thing ever, uh, I accumulate. A parallel the, to this, um, a parallel to this con uh, concept exists in Torah law. Shulchan or Chor 3.22.14 relates that if uh, on, on the Shabbos, there is no kosher food available for a person, who is critically ill, it is uh, preferable to slaughter a kosher animal rather than serve him non-kosher food. Though eating non-kosher food is much less a uh, severe pro uh, pro prohibition, the person will transgress it, um, the person will transgress it with every morsel he eats. Okay. In a contrast, the Shabbos laws, uh, though more severe, need only be uh, um, overlooked once. The lack of okay. So be, before we continue, so let's let's try to understand what what uh, what this commentator is saying. So uh, there is a there is example uh, about about Shabbos law. So they say we, they have a sick person, right? Uh, a sick person meaning that his life is in danger. So he needs uh, to eat meat. Right? Meat helps usually. No, not usually. But really, when when he's weak, so he needs uh, to to get uh, some strength, right? Where he gets strength from meat. And uh, there is no meat available. So especially we have to understand in olden days, they didn't have refrigerators. So whatever, um, whatever the butcher have, right? He has, he, he just sells it and that's it. I'm not sure how, like maybe they have some ice from the rivers. I'm not sure how long uh, they, they can preserve meat. I'm not sure, like maybe a few days tops, right? <clears throat> so, um, so there is no fresh meat. For, for this person to cook. And uh, there are two options. They, uh, they can feed in non-kosher food, right? Non-kosher meat, let's say. Um, or they can, um, uh, or they can uh, slaughter the cow from the beginning and salt the meat and do everything they need from, from the beginning to the end, right? So it's very interesting. Right? Check, check the lungs, everything, everything. So I mean, that it's, uh, as we understand, it's a lot of uh, Torah prohibitions involved in slaughtering cow and uh, and uh, do do this piece of meat, right? They just to get a little piece of meat for this guy, right? So even though our sage said there is no problem, 
there is no problem. You can feel and not wash your food because his life is in danger. But if possible, right, it's better than that to feed him uh, to, to to do the, the slaughter portion. Why? So one one of the explanation that this uh, this commentary is not mentioned that his soul is going to get affected. So every time, God forbid, the Jew eats non-kosher food, so his soul or her soul is going to get affected. Is it possible to get out this effect? Yes, but it's not such an easy thing. You understand? So they say, let him set aside Shabbos laws because that's that's the halacha. On one hand, there is halacha not to slaughter on Shabbos or do ad milachas on one hand. On another hand, if it's pikuach nefesh, if it's a life danger, that you must do that. You must save life. Okay. Okay. But now one of the explanations, he said, I'm, I'm not sure how is it relevant to, Okay, but uh, I'm going to read one more time. Though eating non-kosher food is a much less uh, less severe prohibition, the person will transgress it uh, with ev every morsel it eats. I'm not sure if uh, I think it's for for the whole um, for the whole process of eating. I'm not sure if for every his eyes. For every his eyes, he's responsible. For example, for lashes, uh, if they would uh, warn him. Right, you you're not allowed to eat lash uh, to, to this this uh, non kosher food, and he said okay, and he eats right after he ate uh, his eyes, 28 grams. They say you know what, we just told you you're not allowed to eat. He said okay, you, you told me okay, and he continued, and so then we uh, like um, uh, combine the lashes. So he's going to 39 lashes plus another 39 for each eating. But uh, I think if he continue eating, they warn him only once. He gets only one punishment, the way I understand. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, so continue. In Lekat Tov, uh, chapter 15, Rab Yosef Egel and Engel brings a number of examples where the quantity takes precedence over the quality, right? Quantity, meaning uh, the, this example that we, as we gave. Uh, um, as shaving the uh, uh, razor, right? Over the quantity that he did something only once. Okay. So continue. Mm. So let me read the whole sentence one more time. A person may commit um, may commit a great sin or, may, or many sins, causing the judgment um, rendered before the true judge to be the uh, to to be that the retribution administered to this transgressor for the, these sins we, uh, which will willfully, which he willfully and consciously committed, is that the sure will help back, will help back. So meaning, uh, I think um, the key words here also willfully and consciously. Willfully and consciously meaning that he knew exactly what, what he is doing, or consciously maybe I guess, uh, as our sages explained, if you did not learn halacha, right, then you, you watch the news, you watch the sports, you watch the movies, you watch the concert or, I don't know, or whatever you did, right, you, you played the chess instead of uh, learn, um, learning halacha. So you, you're going to be a, a responsible as a willful transgressor, right, because you had all of the opportunities and you did not learn. Okay, so the show is going to be held back. Commentary 21. After God um, <clears throat> waits for the wicked to repent, and they fail to do so, he takes the potential of the sure from their heart. That's scary, very, very scary. Even uh, if, uh, if they desire to repent and pray to God, they find themselves incapable of doing so. Shmot Rabba 11.1, um, right? The Hashem simply like taking the, even the thought of the shua, it's not going to enter their heart. Even though people uh, are, are going to pass this, um, I don't know, the, the shua story, some uh, inspirational story, and guess what? Some people are going to repent and change their life around after watching this story for two minutes. As, uh, for example, Rabbi Ruin Schlitt, uh, personal story, it's very, very inspirational inspire hundreds of thousands of people, that's for sure, right? And um, and other people would uh, watch for three minutes and then turn off, right? Nothing. Or, or they would say very interesting story and that's it. 
and do not apply would not apply to themselves would never change. <clears throat> 21. Continue next sentence. He will not be allowed the chance to repent from from his wickedness, so that he will die uh, and wipe out because of the sins he committed. Okay, so Rambam is very clear. So Hashem is say, I don't want you. I don't want you to, to show for all of these things, for all of these uh, um, countless times that I gave you um, second chance and third chance and one millionth chance, and you just threw them in the garbage. Guess what? I don't want you to wipe you out. Okay. Number 22, come to him. <clears throat> God wants a person once, <laughs> twice, three times. If he does not repent, God locks the Shua out of his heart so that he may um, so he may take retribution from him for his sins. Shmos Rabba 33. So Shmos Rabba is very, very clear, very, very straightforward. Um, so one time, two times, and three times. So our sages say that uh, the early the early person uh, recognized that uh, he, he is leading the wrong, wrong wife, sinful wife, the easier for him or her to do the shuma. So, but when person realizes, or uh, given a chance, I, I'm not sure he realized that, given a chance, given something like uh, in a, when he's older, when, uh, when he's uh, maybe 30, 40, 50 years old, so the harder it's uh, sometimes almost impossible for them uh, to do the shuma, right? Because why? Because all of the chances that, uh, that be because you send this person a, a link to an inspiring lecture, inspired the inspiring video, after so many chances, Hashem said, no, has, uh, he has no right to, 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 to watch this video. I, I, this person, I don't want. So don't, uh, many times uh, people take it per personally, they, they try to inspire somebody, it did not work. So that's, that's actually the answer many times. I'm very, very fortunate, unfortunate, of course. This is a much more severe punishment that is called in Teshuvah. Right? Uh, this is much severe punishment that, I'm sorry, I, I apologize, I misread. This is the much more severe punishment that the withhold in Teshuvah mentioned in chapter 3, Halacha 1. Uh, in those instances, God will not assist transgressor in his repentance. Right? That's what we in chapter 3. Right, the Lord. However, if he perseveres in his own initiative, God will accept his repentance. As we said always before, and uh, comment, commentators uh, repeat again. So if on, on his own in initiative, meaning Hashem is not going to help, Hashem is not going to help uh, send him like uh, this uh, Google, uh, YouTube advertisements, right? In this case, God actually puts obstacles in the path of the person's desire to repent. Very clear. He's, he's going to put obstacles. So suddenly he, he wanted to do the shua. Uh, he said, I'm not going to work on showers. Guess what? He He's going to get promotion. What promotion that he was waiting for 10 years, right? 10 years he was waiting for a promotion. They deny, deny, deny. Now he wants to skip showers and said, now we're going to make a manager and he's going to work, on, of course, weekends because uh, every manager today works on weekends, even if it's remote, doesn't matter, we're not required to come to the office, but guess what? We're going to work. So of course, that's uh, that's how uh, the thing works. So he's not he's not going to give him a chance. I mean, of course, he has a free choice, but it's a very hard, tough choice. However, even a person's the show will be abstracted. Uh, he should not despair of establishing a bond with God. So just because there is a uh, some obstacle does not mean that you, you cannot go uh, establish bond with, with Hashem. That's, uh, but it's very, very, very different. Very, very difficult. Right? King Menashe committed more severe sins than all of the kings who preceded him. Nevertheless, in the Re'amim 3312 state, uh, relates that when he was in affliction, he sought God, right? his Lord, and humbled himself before God uh, oh, um, the God of his fathers, right? So he was Menashe, is a king who committed um, so many murders. He killed all of the Chachamim, all of the rabbis. Um, him, I guess his wife also, I don't remember the story, but uh, 
his wife was no, no, it's um, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not sure about his wife, but but he for sure, many people, and he would uh, install the idols all over the um, the Israel, right? Okay, commenting on this verse in Shalem Tam, it's of heaven 11 2 relates that the angels stopped at the windows of heaven to prevent his prayers from reaching God, right? They say, okay, the angels, right? Uh, angels are supposed to be emotionless, less, right? No emotions. But these times, even the, in this time, even they ca- could not help the, the emotions back, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, when God saw that Menashe's intent is, was sincere, but here they, they were uh, frying him in, uh, or frying him or boiling him in, uh, in, uh, in a big, um, like, container, I think. That that was, uh, of course, he had no choice. He he just uh, he he was crying to all of the gods that he all of the idols that he used to serve and nobody answered of course he tried to Hashem right and what Hashem did he dug him in Hashem the tunnel under the heavenly throne to allow him to repent so it was like back uh, back door right but we, we should not count on that okay continue the. Um, this is implied by, by the Holy One, blessed is He, statement related in Shayahu 6.10. Make the hearts of the people fat and make their ears heavy. Smear over their eyes, lest that they see with their eyes, <coughs> understand with their hearts and repent and repent and be healed. So Shayahu said, you know, these people, Hashem, make sure that they don't make uh, the show up. Country, God tells the prophet that the spiritual sensitivity of the people will be dulled to the point that they will not ap- appreciate the need uh, for repentance. So um, it's very hard or almost, almost impossible to, to, to help a person who thinks that he is right, that she is uh, right, they are leading a, a righteous life, or according to them, they will say, I'm a good person, I don't kill anybody, I'll steal from them. But I pay my taxes. What what else do you want from me, right? So the, the people like that, uh, they have this uh, is, uh, is uh, what is the expression? Do a uh, dual heart, right? And that they no no sensitivity. <clears throat> Continue similarly in the very I mean uh, base uh, thirty six sixteen states they mark the messengers of God, scorn his words, right? scoffed at his prophets until the anger of God mounted up against his people until he was uh, he, there was no remedy. Right? Hashem sent these uh, messengers, the, his, uh, uh, his holy prophets, and they try and they yell and they scream and they beg and people don't listen. And at one time, as for Shalom, Hashem said that said, no, nobody asking good. This was described the chain of events which uh, led to destruction of the first temple. Each day, God would send a new prophet to exhort the people for, uh, to repentance. That's, that's how much Hashem wanted to save Jewish people. You understand? However, the people would respond with scorn. A- again, you rabbi, again, again. Like, like many, many people, like clowns, make uh, fun of Rabbi Rubin. No, not many, but some. I, was, I don't want to say many. Some people, right? Uh, making fun, right? To harsh, to this, to that. Let's say nothing new under under the sky. That's exactly from uh, before the destruction of the first temple, right? Ultimately, God removed the possibility of repentance from them and brought upon them the king of the Kasdim, right? Who slew young men with the sword and had no compassion, uh, no compassion, young men, virgins, old men, or feeble. That's it. He killed everybody. So you you you're uh, laughing on uh, at, at my uh, uh, at my prophets, making fun of them. Guess what? I'm going to you. You are insensitive. Guess what? I'm going to send send the guy who's also even more insensitive than you. Unfortunate. Implied by these verses is that that they willingly sinned, multiplying their iniquity until um, it was necessary. To help back to shore, 
So they basically, it's not like Hashem removed that to show how is it possible we just uh, spoke about riches. No, no, no. They did so many sins that uh, they got to the point that's it, no more to show. Right? So they used the, um, you used up uh, the, uh, the ch- chances, right? Um, which is uh, just one second. Uh, one, one more time, the whole sentence, implying uh, by the by these verses is that uh, they willfully sinned, multiplying their iniquity until it was necessary to hold back the teshua, which is referred to as remedy. So teshua, as we always say, and I am trying to remind everybody as, as always as I can that it is remedy. Master teshua cannot live like that. Right? The association uh, of Teshua with the metaphor of healing or remedy was employed in chapter 1, Halakha 4, quoting Yirmiyahu 3.22, I will heal your uh, backsliding. Okay. Continue. <clears throat> For this reason, it is written in the Torah in Shmos 14.4, I will harden heart, uh, Pharaoh's heart. That's okay, so we got to the fair. There is uh, to prevent him from responding uh, affirmatively to the Moshe's appeal to send forth people. Right? So after he seen that all this destruction is happening to, to Egypt, so it, did he have a doubt that Hashem can do even more? <laughs> I don't think so, but somehow he was hurting his heart. So let's see. Since he began to sin on his own initiative, that, that's what he said. He It was his... Uh, his idea to, to enslave the Jews, right? To, to weak them, weaken them, right? Uh, on his own initiative and cause hardship to Israelites who dwell in the land. Uh, as it says in uh, Shmos 1.10, uh, come, let us deal wisely with them. And uh, to enslave them, come it, eh? As the Torah subsequently relates, the ins- um, he enslaved the people, murdered their children and uh, embittered their lives. That was the, the plan. Uh, come, uh, let us deal uh, wisely with them. Judgment obligated that he be prevented from repenting so that uh, he would suffer retribution. That's it. Right? So after he did all of this, he did. So the, the, the justice is what? To, 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 to prevent him from doing uh, to show. So why? To punish him. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be He, hardened His heart. Commentary. Pharaoh was punished not only for the previous deeds, but uh, for his refusal to send Jewish people after God hardened his heart. So basically, we, uh, that's the most famous question. One may ask, okay, you know, he's going to explain. <laughs> How could he be punished for an act that he had no choice but to commit? Right? So let me explain the question. So the question is, okay, what, until the, I don't know, what was it? I think uh, uh, until the fifth uh, punishment, right? Uh, he had a free choice. But after, um, like, um, after the Maka, Maka uh, what is it? How do you say Maka? It's not punishment. Um, the world. Okay, so the, the punishment in Egypt. All, all together there were 10, right? So, and uh, after the fifth one, so Hashem said, Moshe, you go there, but guess what? I'm going to remove uh, free choice. Uh, I'm going to harden his heart, and he's not going to let you go. So the question is, okay, uh, and um, so the statement is first, the statement. So um, he was uh, punished, Pharaoh was punished for the first fight, for all, all of this bad that he did to Jewish people. Let's put it this way, right? And um, and uh, for five times that he did not listen to Hashem, and for five other times, uh, even after his uh, freedom of choice was removed, right? So the, the question is, okay, we understand for first five times for all of this hardship that he caused to Israelites, we understand, but why, how could you uh, punish him uh, if uh, his free choice was removed, right? That's... Uh, Classic questions, and of course, the answer is even better. The question can be resolved on the basis of Halacha, Baba Mitzia 42a, Hilchas Nitzkei Mamon 215, which obligates watchmen to make a retribution, restitution uh, for property that was destroyed by the factors beyond his control. If he was negligent, 
um, in its care initially, right? So he was negligent, and then the factors beyond his control came and destroyed the property. So now he is liable. How is his car liable? Similarly, uh, through them, similarly, though, uh, similarly, though, ultimately, Pharaoh was not responsible for his action. Hence, the ability of, um, to choose freely was taken away from him. Because of his initial wickedness, he was obligated to suffer the consequences of the latter deeds as well. So the last sentence explains everything. So that's, uh, okay. So let's, let, let's try to explain. So how, so the question is how he was, uh, uh, why he was punished for the five uh, last um, a judgment uh, that, that Hashem brought over, over Egypt. Why, why is that? We said he, he had no free choice. Said exactly, exactly. He had no free choice, but he had to be punished. Why? He put himself in that situation, meaning his all of his previous life, his all of his previous actions, he put himself in a situation that Hashem had to or must uh, was obligated, right, to punish him according to the laws of Torah. That's it, right? So that's why it's uh, uh, it's uh, his fault, hundred percent. Meaning, uh, Pharaoh's. <clears throat> Continue after number twenty-eight. Uh, God, um, why uh, why did God send Moshe to Pharaoh? Telling him, send forth the people. Uh, people repent, right? So, uh, second part of this question, right? Uh, first, we we explain why uh, why Pharaoh was punished, right? But second part, why why send the Moshe, right? If we know that uh, it's not going to work, the Holy One, blessed be He, had already told him that He would not uh, release people. I mean, He told Moshe that. Uh, he, meaning Pharaoh, would not release people, right? As it says in Rashmos uh, 9.30, I realize that you and your subject will not fear God. So that's what Moshe said. Hence, Moshe's mission appears uh, futile and purposeless. It's only a peer, right? It's only a peer. The reason is stated in Rashmos uh, 9.16, for this sin alone, I have present, uh, preserved you, so that uh, my name will be spoken about throughout the earth. There is to make known to all the inhabitants of the world that when the Holy One, blessed be He, is called repentance from a sinner, he, uh, he cannot repent, but he will die in the wickedness uh, and he, uh, he initially committed willfully. So what, what we're saying here, that, uh, that uh, this Pharaoh guy, uh, was uh, let alone to live, right? Uh, was punished severely, so he would be like a witness and tell everybody about the miracles of Hashem. Right? So one more time, there is uh, to make known to all of the inhabitants of the world that the Holy One, blessed be He, is called repentance from a sinner. So, <clears throat> commentary. Egypt was the center of civilization, civilized world for uh, uh, of that age. Hence, what happened there become known to all mankind. So, and through who? Through the Pharaoh, right? The, the most uh, famous person. Any observer could have realized that after the first um, plagues, Pharaoh should definitely have heeded Moshe's request. So everybody, like, logically, just uh, look, Pharaoh, somebody's uh, stronger than you, just let them go. And then just people, why keep them in your land? His refusal to do so uh, clearly demonstrated that aside from the stubbornness, God's hand was uh, also involved. The Pharaoh served as example to teach all men, right? And I would say for all the generations. Okay. So one more time this quote. So it says, uh, to make known to all, so why, why Hashem left him alone? To make known to all of the inhabitants of the world that when the Holy One blessed be here, this, this holds his, uh, his repentance from a sinner. He cannot repent. I mean, in what uh, God will negate his free choice? That's it, right? But he will die in the in uh, in the wickedness that he initially committed willfully. So, meaning he uh, he cooked this soup to to himself, and now he's uh, with all this uh, 
bad ingredients, so now he's forced to eat whatever he was cooking. So it's uh, just uh, very just. Okay, continue. <clears throat> Similar to Sihon, so we can see. Uh, the, the king of Amorites, whose territory lay in the path of Jews, on their way to Eretz Israel, though Jews offered to pass through his land without engaging him in war, he refused and challenged them in battle. His arms were utterly defeated. Uh, his army, I'm sorry, his armies were utterly defeated, and he was uh, and he was slain. It says, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, chapter twenty-one. So basically, uh, he he was a sinful person. That that's for sure. So we offered him peace, and uh, basically the Jews were were uh, were. Were ready if, if he would refuse go go around him not not, not to, to make a war with him right but he said but he was stumbled, stubborn and he he went uh, to get against the Jews and he was slain okay so one more time this sentence similarly Sihon was held liable from for a repentance to be withheld from him because he, uh, of the sins he committed so because of the previous sins he committed so now he could have let uh, the, the Jews pass uh, through the territory and they say, we're going to pay you, right? Still, he was stubborn. Okay. It says, sorry. God, your Lord, hardened this, his spirit and strengthened his heart. Coming to it would have been unfair to punish Sihon for not allowing the Jews to pass through the land since that uh, decision was made because God hardened his heart. <clears throat> right, so I'm in similar situation. However, prior to this incident, Sihon had committed many other sins, and uh, as a retribution for his weakness, wickedness, I'm sorry, wickedness, God prevented him from accepting Jewish offer. Sihon and Prakim, same place. Okay, so next example. Also, the Canaanites were held back uh, from repenting because of their abominable acts. Right, so when, when we came to um, to the land of Israel. Abominable acts, commentary. The Torah Kahanim uh, comments on, uh, on Waikra 18.3 relates that uh, Canaanites' behavior was more deprived than any idolatrous nation. So it was the lowest of the lowest uh, people. Right? It's one, one of the reasons Hashem said, not because you're such a big tzaddik and I give you the land, but because uh, the iniquity of these people are too much. Right? They uh, the, the lowest people, so I'm, I'm getting them off the land. But Hashem said, don't, don't behave like that. Continue. <clears throat> uh, actually, yeah, let, let's do from the beginning. Um, also, the um, Canaanites were held back from repenting because of their abominable acts, so that they would wage war against Israel, as Yehoshua 11.20 states. Uh, okay, so let's finish. This was inspired by God to harden their hearts so that they should come against Israel in battle in order to utterly to destroy them. Not to destroy them. Right? So Hashem took off their uh, freedom of choice and they went against Hashem, even though they saw that it uh, has a mighty army and Hashem is fighting their wars. 35. The preceding verse states there was no city which accepted uh, a peaceful settlement. With the children of Israel, except the uh, Hivites who lived in Gibeon. All of the rest of the con uh, conquered uh, were conquered in the battle. And uh, well, when we conquered in the battle, we are obligated to kill them all. Right? I mean, it's, it's only in, this, in, the, in the land of Israel. Based on Yerushalayim Tal, Shiviz 6 1, Hilchas Melachim 6 5 states, Yehoshua sent three letters to Canaanites before entering the promised land. At first he sent them, whoever desired to flee should flee. Okay. Afterwards he sent the second message, whoever desired to accept peaceful settlements should make peace. Okay. Then he sent again, uh, whoever desired war should go or should do battle. The, the command to destroy Canaanites only applies to those who did not accept the peaceful uh, settlement. So they, they, they had options. Hence, after seeing all of the miracles, 
which accompanied the Jews. It would have been logical for the Canaanites to accept the Kashur offer of peace. Okay, so they would leave uh, there and, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not sure why, why they had to move, uh, they had to be killed, I think, um, or like, at least that they could, could have moved, right? Could have leave uh, the, the country, leave, go somewhere else. The story fine. Okay, continue. We're almost done. Similar to the Israelites during the era of Il Eliyahu, committed many uh, iniquities. Repentance was held back from those who committed uh, these many sins. Verse 6. In Hashua 4.17, described the Israelites of that age with a statement, Ephraim is joined, is joined to idols, let, um, let him go. So one more time, Hashua uh, 4.17 described the Israelites of that age with a statement, Ephraim is joined uh, to, to idols, let him go. So uh, when we say Ephraim, we mean not only the tribe of Ephraim, but the whole nor northern kingdom, right? The, tri the ten tribes. <clears throat> uh, he willfully established a bond with idol worship. It is fit to let him go, to, to abandon him, uh, to his love for them and remove his potential for repentance. As, um, as the Kings Aleph 18, uh, 37 states, um, you have turned their hearts backwards. There is held repentance uh, back from them. Right from these people, 37. Commentary, Eliyahu made this statement uh, in a confrontation with the prophets of Baal at the Mount Carmel, okay? Rav Sadia go on, so that is a famous story, 450, um, these false prophets against Eliyam. Rav Sadia go on, interprets this verse as um, as request for God to turn, uh, to turn the hearts of the people back to him, right? Nevertheless, the Rambam views, views it as an explanation of how it was possible for Israel to uh, to continue serving God. Okay. So because why did they serve so much? They had no free choice. Okay, continue. In conclusion, the Almighty did not decree that uh, Pharaoh should harm the Israelites, that Sihon should sin in his land, that Canaanites should perform abominable acts, or that Israelites should worship idols. They all sinned uh, uh, on their own initiative, and they were obligated, to, and they were obligated to have Teshuvah held back from them. So they went too far, and uh, Teshuvah had to be taken out of them. Sorry, eight. They had free, uh, they had free will, and used uh, that potential to commit severe transgressions, which warranted harsh punishment. Right, they had free will, they chose wrong and uh, had to be punished. Okay, so we can stop here. We finish the lacha. The time is over. Yeah, perfect, perfect time. Exactly. 59 minutes. Wow. Okay. All right, so good night until tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing Hill has to show up. Laws of blessing. Hill, uh, of grass. Laws of blessing. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you.